Welcome to my channel where we discuss anime, manga, gaming, philosophy, politics, all this stuff. And today I'm talking about pantheism and pantheism. Now right here, I have this book called The Ethics of Spinoza. I recommend it. It's in part the whole entire... Uh, Influence for this video, and another thing is the elements of theology by Proclus. A lot of people, in my opinion, don't really have a good view of the spiritual or religious philosophy. They tend to look at dogma. They don't tend to look at common themes which present themselves in metaphysics, and Certainly, they don't try to get a full understanding of the nature of the beliefs about the divine. You have atheism, pantheism, panentheism, monotheism, theism, uh, agnosticism, agnosticism, gnosticism, and all this stuff. And then you have different religions and different uh, religious movements and new religious movements. Because I don't want to use the word cults because I don't think cults is a respectful term towards people and their views. Because uh, there's a lot of negative connotations you get from the term cults. Um, and I started thinking that way because of Religion for Breakfast, one of my favorite YouTube channels on uh, spiritual and religious themes. And um, so you have people who don't really cover this. So either they will look at the dogma of religion. Or they might look at, I don't know, let's say, some type of ritual, as like a lot of those uh, pagans seem to do. And, or they might be atheistic and say all religion, use religion as a bank, blank, you know, a blanket, blanket term, and tell us that religion is evil, they don't want anything to do with it, they don't want to discuss it. So, pretty much a religion and spirituality takes a big hit from a big ignorance of it. So on one side you have this dogma, on the other side you have this dislike, well, on the other side you have superficial ritual stuff which I've attacked heavily in my Neoplatonicism or my modern Platonicism series which I took a stand against Iblikian uh, Platonicism. And I will finish that series sooner or later. Uh, I, I'm just changing the way I do things here because I really don't think repetitive videos, one after the other, really suits my style because there's so much to talk about. And so you kind of can get bored uh, going through one subject over and over again instead of looking at all this multidisciplinarian, this uh, vast knowledge that's found in philosophy. So, in this video, I wanted to talk about pantheism and panentheism. First, the ethics. Then, I'm going to talk about what pantheism is and panentheism. So, the interesting thing I've noticed about pantheism is no matter if you're looking at the Stoics, the uh, Platonists, or the Hindus, who are more panentheistic, but uh, I'm just going to count them anyway because there's a lot of similarities, more so than differences between panentheism and pantheism. So, what I've noticed a lot, even when you look at Plotinus, anyway, or even at uh, Spinoza or Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus, um, unlike most uh, spiritual movements, Pantheism and panentheism believes that humans can actually achieve perfection. Now, saying achieve perfection, I do not mean in the sense that uh, you can become perfect and that uh, you can become blameless and without uh, you know, fault anymore, but that you can work and become closer and closer to perfection. And as uh, Spinoza talks about in, ethi in uh, the ethics. Joy is a man's passage from lesser to 
a greater perfection. And so anyway, from there you have ethics that aims at improving man. Because a lot of times pantheism and panentheism is attached to a certain type of humanism and it brings people to think about world, the world in a way which there's hope. Now, less on the ethics, more on what to define pantheism and panentheism. So a lot of people are confused because the atheists on one end attack pantheists and panentheists for being religious theists. Uh, monotheists and polytheists attack pantheists and panentheists for being atheistic, but it's not really near the facts of what's actually happening. Because the pantheists and panentheists, they believe, all pretty much uh, demonstrate through geometry that panentheist conception of the world is more like a triangle, the pantheist is more like a circle. Now, what I mean is that, for example, you take the Platonic conception of the world, you have the one who's the strongest emanation, like, for example, at the tip of a triangle, that's the strongest point where it's like a very acute angle that uh, exists. Nothing can get through here, and if I were to attack with, like, let's say, a pointy object, that's a triangle that creates that point, that pointy object is able to uh, deal some serious damage. Now as we go down, it gets weaker, weaker, then finally at its weakest. And so you have the one, which is the strongest. It's pretty much the independent theist thing. That's exactly the very source of godhood. That's uh, where all the henads are, the participants of the divine. Then going down the divine minds are still you still have all these participants, but they're weaker participants. Then you go down to the material world, where it's the weakest of all participants, and that's where we are, the material world. And so uh, the God is both in the physical universe, but he's also outside it, and um, everything's connected, and that God is everywhere. So you'd see uh, certain spirituality where everything is within God, but God is greater than everything. Um, Pan or pantheism, on the other hand, is more like a circle. So let's say, for example, you have this God figure. This God figure expands out, expands out, expands out. Kind of like how scientists talk about the universe as forever expanding. Uh, so this expansion, very similar to the Hunter idea of the religious talked about a single with the triangle but this expansion come, goes on and that there's no distinction point nothing gets further away from God but everything is within God and it becomes huge with the capital Y by the way and it's in pretty much everything in the universe and that everything is connected everything's beautiful everything's come perfect like the chaos of the world has created such elegant beauty that it's hard to believe that nothing is divine or that nothing can be not divine that uh, also within this you have know, like kind of a more scientific uh, approach to spirituality because like the physics becomes a big thing which is more purposeful and it pretty much tells us that the beauty of the world, the div divinity of the world, are pretty much the same thing. And there's a very interesting uh, distinction here that the pantheism is more like a uh, concrete thing. It's more like the universe is itself, that there's no distinction of spirit and or not spirit, but there's no distinction of things in terms of the metaphysics and the physics. It's all the same. Panentheism takes that uh, notion and rips it and stretches it out to where metaphysics and physics 
are connected. But at the same time, they're different, and that there's a little bit more that we don't understand, and that's pretty much all it is. So please like, comment, subscribe, hit that like, hit, I mean hit that bell button if you want to see more. I promise I will keep posting some very interesting videos. See you later.